Hi. I got so bored of playing TF2 and waiting for the Pyro update that I'm actually uh, making a TF2 video. It's been a while since I've done one of these. So I've had video ideas, but just not any motivation, but I'm here now. Recently on the TF2 subreddit, there was a sticky post about a game of truth or dare. Although some people recorded themselves performing their dares, most didn't, so I've decided to take their place and try my hand at them. Dare number one, on two fort from your own battlements, kill an enemy sniper as heavy. For this dare, which I'll call challenge from here because that's more of what it was, was pretty boring. I spent a while just revved up hoping to kill an already low sniper. I decided I would need crits though. I tried getting a 12 year old with a mic to help out and crits me, but no dice. I actually did get random crits a couple times, but the sniper always had enough time to run to safety without dying. Because of the minigun's fall off and random bullet spread making me do 2-5 to five damage without crits every hit every once in a while, I decided that I need some sort of cheeky tactic. Knowing that this would take too long, I kindly asked my friend Chili to body shot with the Sydney sleeper to lower a sniper's health and jirati him at the same time, so I could probably do closer to 20 damage a hit. This is actually what ended up working. Dare number two, play a game using the Rocket Jumper, Battalion's Backup, and Half Satoshi. This one really wasn't much of a challenge, all it does is really just uh, make the game harder and less fun to play. None of the weapons really go that well together, I never got a good Battalion's Backup uh, going. So I'll just talk about the first truth instead as I let the highlights roll, and trust me there's not really many of them, so I'll make it kind of quick. All jokes aside, do you think the Team Fortress team is actually good at balancing the game? So yeah, I actually think the Team Fortress team is pretty good when it comes to balancing pub play. Where I think the conversation really lies is, with, is within competitive play. The community and Valve clearly have different ways that they can balance the game, because Valve can actually change weapon stats to balance, but community leagues can't do this. So when there's something that doesn't fit into right into the flow of play, they just have to ban the weapon. So within public servers, gameplay is pretty balanced, although a good sniper can destroy. Dare number three, get a kill using the wrench by sentry jumping and hitting somebody before you land in the ground, also known as the market partner. But here's the thing, right? I'm pretty bad at everything but battle engineer because I can really just rely on my aim for that. So when it comes to like metal management and the things like that, I'm definitely not stellar. I actually did get one, but you're gonna have to trust me on it because I wasn't recording a demo. So what I'll do is I'll record all of the fails that I actually got and I'll talk about uh, one of the most important truths in the whole thread, which is how do you think Pyro should be changed in the upcoming update? I personally think that Pyro is nearly impossible to make it so he's fun to play and to play against. Currently, the flamethrower is broken and frustrating to use just with the way flames work, and it's never fun to fight against a Pyro. In any game, fighting against a character that can just stun you is no fun. <clears throat> Uh, which is why air blast is terrible so it's also no fun to win the fight and still die to afterburn so i think those two things are the main things that should be changed obviously for pyro it makes no sense to him for him to just not have afterburn that would be stupid so i would personally make it so the longer time you spend actually engulfed in pyro's flame the longer your afterburn is and the the more damage it will do this makes it so if they really want to commit to killing you afterwards they actually have to commit to burning you but if they really just want to flare punch you, they can light you on fire and you might not dive afterburn. For changes to air blast, I would make it so it stuns the player less so you could actually strafe out of it if you're good. It more sends you flying backwards than backwards and up maybe. And so unless you're really just in a tight corner, you might actually have a chance of getting out of it. Another small thing I would do uh, to discourage WM1 and encourage uh, skill, maybe try to bring back the uh, extinguisher combo a little bit. I don't know exactly how this would be done, I'll leave that up to Valve, but I think it'd be nice to have more combos as Pyro that get him close, because he is a close range character. I know uh, this would just be a start, even if the anything like this were to be, actually be implemented, but uh, they're all things that I think would be okay for Valve to do if they uh, expanded upon them more. Dare number four, get a Sandman taunt kill. So this one really wasn't too hard, it was just camp around a corner and hope somebody walks around it. It was more of a challenge of 
testing my patience and uh, not actually being able to play the game while in the game, just spamming G. So uh, I did end up getting it, and uh, I feel pretty bad for the sniper. Poor guy. So, Truth or Dare Week 2 is actually out now, so if you'd like to see more of these, just let me know, please. Uh, if you don't want to see more, still let me know, or at least just tell me how to improve. Uh, if you want these to be longer, I can just do more truths and dares, but uh, this was more of a test run. Also, if you leave a dare, make sure it's fun to do. Like, if you wouldn't be willing to do it, uh, maybe you shouldn't leave that comment. Uh, <laughs> some of these things are just a pain in the ass.